Hey everyone. It's extremely cold. Though I suspect it's probably colder where you are than here because I think the south of England has, uh, has got much worse weather. But, uh, oh my goodness, it's about naught degrees here. So not as bad as other places. And I wanted to show you my new hat. <laughs> this is a birthday present from my son, Michael. I asked for some yellow, yellow things for us stand in the park. I'm <laughs> standing in the park regalia. So I got this yellow hat. It's very warm. So um, I, I wanted to jump on and give you a bit of an update about the Freedom Alliance. Uh, so you, if you've been following the story so far, <laughs> you will know that my foray into politics has not been exactly plain sailing. But, um, you know, I trust in the process. I trust the universe. I trust that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be at any one point in time and uh, it is very it's been very interesting to uh, to go back into the world of politics again I have to say it's reminded me of my first foray into politics which was back in 2006 and um, back then I'd just been on Dragon's Den and I was quite a public supporter of David Cameron and the whole of the Conservative Party, you know, being a champion for enterprise, really, and being a dragon. And they were organising a sort of Dragon's Den style panel at the Conservative Party conference in 2006. And they were getting kind of young Conservatives to pitch policy to the senior members of the, um, of the party. And they wanted to have a dragon on the panel. So it was chaired by Theresa May and I was on the panel with Oliver Letwin and Anne Widdecombe and who else? Who else was uh, who else was on that panel? There was someone else, I can't quite remember. Anyway, so I was um, invited to go to the Conservative Party conference and I've never been before. Uh, but, but it was a real, I mean, it was actually really great fun. I think it was, from memory, it was in Brighton. It might have been Bournemouth. I'm pretty sure it was in Brighton on the south coast somewhere. And uh, I'm really having to dredge through my memory banks. But what I do remember is uh, Anne Widdecombe in the green room. We were in the green room before we went on, on stage. Actually, Boris Johnson turned up in the green room and it was like a god was walking through. Um, interestingly. And anyway, we were in the green room and Anne Widdecombe said to me, oh, you should stand. You should stand as an MP. I said, oh, really? And she said, yes, have my seat, have my seat. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to be re retiring before the next election. Have my seat. I said, well, well where do you live? She said, in Kent. I said, well, I don't live in Kent. I live in Derbyshire. She said, well, that doesn't matter. Uh, she said, it's a safe seat. You'll get in. So I'm like, oh. And then later, after the event was done, in the kind of uh, loads of kind of, there's a whole enclave. And you could only get in if you've got a, um, a, a conference pass. So there's loads of parties and drinks and evening kind of seminars and talks and things. And I was at this, um, I was at another kind of drinks event talking to some, some guys and they were like, oh yeah, you definitely want to stand as an MP. The expenses alone are worth a million pounds a year. <laughs> you know, I was like, and this was before the expenses scandal, but I remember distinctly him saying that because I had, I had no idea. I just thought MPs just got paid uh, hundred grand or whatever they get paid, 150,000, something like that. Um, so I, I had no idea real, really that the money was in the expenses. Anyway, so that was my first foray into politics. And as a result of that, um, oh look, let me just uh, show you here. Can you see? Mole Hills, the Crestbrook Mole. We finally found the Crestbrook Mole. We knew we had a mole and <laughs> that must be it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, so as a result of this Conservative Party conference uh, appearance, I was then invited to David Cameron's Women to Win initiative, where he was trying to get as many women standing as um, candidates. And, uh, and of course, all of us sort of business women were in the frame for that. So I got an invite to this soiree at Sir Paul Judge's um, penthouse apartment 
which is uh, just next to Westminster Bridge. Amazing, stunning apartment. And uh, all of these women, all of these power women. And, uh, and then David Cameron arrived. He was on his way to some black tie event. So he, he had his sort of tuxedo on, except he hadn't put his black tie on yet. And, oh, he's an incredibly dishy guy. And I was still in that phase of kind of like totally in the program. I managed to touch him. It was a bit like touching Elvis, you know. <laughs> I touched him. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, uh, and then I got all the forms to stand as an MP <coughs> or to, to, um, to put myself forward as a candidate or whatever. And it was quite funny because I remember filling in all these forms and I got to this box which, <laughs> which said, if there is, it was, it was a question like, um, is there, is there anything in your past which, uh, if if it became public, might bring the party into disrepute? This repute? And uh, <coughs> and uh, there was this tiny little box, and it was kind of like I was I was wanting to to put C attachment <laughs> to actually list everything. And I thought, oh no, this probably isn't such a good idea, and I didn't actually go ahead with it. Then my second little foray into politics was speaking at an event, uh, an uh, enterprise event in Holland. And the guest, the main guest speaker was um, Nick Clegg. He was then Deputy Prime Minister. Because if you remember, the, there was a, the Lib, Lib Dems had made a pact with the Conservatives to, uh, uh, to get power. There was a coalition government. When was that? I think probably... Oh, maybe it was that 2007, 2008, I can't quite remember. Anyway, so I met Nick Clegg at this event. Amazing guy. Really incredible. Another dish, really dishy guy. Very tall, handsome. Uh, amazing guy. And he spoke in Dutch to the audience. His wife is Dutch and he's lived there for a while. And he just won, he just won the audience over. A great speaker. Really liked him. Funnily enough, I was on a train to... Uh, somewhere up north at King's Cross and uh, there are all these kind of sniffer dogs and uh, I was in the first class carriage all these sort of sniffer dogs it all, all seemed a bit odd and then I got up to go to the toilet and when I got, got back I realised sitting behind me was Nick Clegg and so I went across to him and I said Nick hello do you remember me we spoke at that event in Holland and all of his uh, bodyguards all reached into their pocket and it was like oh my god they think I'm a I'm an attacker or some kind of uh, crazy woman. So that was an interesting thing. And the, the final little foray into politics, because of course, when you, when you are sort of dragon and you go and speak at events, you're always put on the top table and they always put the MPs on the top table. So I, I used to kind of end up sitting next to all these MPs and there was, I did an event in Scotland and sat next to him. I forget his name. I'm not very good at names. I forget his name, this guy, but he was a good, close ally of Gordon Brown. At the time, this was... Uh, hold on a second, I'm trying to think back in time. Uh, anyway, he invited me to... Uh, he invited me to go and have uh, lunch with him at uh, the uh, and drinks in the members' bar at the House the Houses of Parliament in the House of Commons. Hold on, let's go across here. The brook is a lot calmer. I think it must be a bit frozen. Going across the, the bridge across the brook here. Alright, go on baby. It's very snowy so I'm having to be careful. So he invited me to this lunch and to, to his office. And it was quite interesting, so I went up to his office. Sounds a bit rude, this, doesn't it? I went, he invited me to his office. <laughs> anyway, um, I just said, oh, wow, amazing neck curtains. Like these huge neck curtains. And he said, they're bomb curtains. Because if there's a bomb, if a bomb goes off, they're designed to catch all the flying glass. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. And, you know, I think it does bring it home to you that, uh, you know, there was a time when being an MP was probably... Well, I think it still is a status symbol. However, I would imagine right now it's actually a very high risk occupation as well, given everything that's unfolding. Um, you know, people turning up at your home, protesting about this, that and the other, threats of standing for Nuremberg trials and all the rest of it. 
so anyway, um, so of course when the clarion call went out and Mary A. Finch, she, she basically sent out, her, she wrote a blog post and she said, join the Freedom Alliance. And I thought, well, yeah, that's a good idea. An alliance of all the people who are standing for freedom coming together and kind of pattern interrupting the political system. And so, and I, I just tend to kind of say yes and show up. I'm in that kind of Mora Bush taught me that. If you know Mora, Colour Mirrors, amazing woman. That's her motto, say yes and show up. And I always trust that the universe will, will send me exactly where I need to, to be, exactly where I need to go. So, and I tend to just go, go into things wholeheartedly. Kobe, Kobe, this way. No, we're not going up the mountain. This way. Good boy. Come on, let's go this way. That path leads right to the ridge. Very dangerous at the best of times, let alone in this weather. Anyway, where was I? Yes, say yes and show up. So kind of in good faith, I just like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll stand. And, and so I, I sent an email actually to Denise Boot, who's the nominating officer, who was the nominating officer at the time, said, oh yeah, I, I read Mary Finch's blog and yeah, I'll, I'll stand. And uh, then I got a call from Jonathan. I was actually walking here actually, he phoned me and I was walking Crestbrook. And uh, yeah, no, no forms to fill in or anything. It's just like you're in. And so we agreed that it would be good to do a kind of a town hall event, public meeting. And I was suggesting January. He said, no, 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 do it sooner, do it sooner. And I'm like, okay. Uh, so we ended up doing it in November, kind of like within five or six weeks. So, uh, but yeah, sometimes it's good to, to get momentum going on these things. Gosh, it's so cold. Oh man, I've got new gloves as well. These uh, Klimt gloves, actually, do the other. Let me see the, the kiss by Klimt. My son bought me these as well. All right, let's go back, actually. It's getting too cold. Come on, Kobe, this way. So anyway, went ahead did the whole town hall thing. And, and so I, I then went public on this. And pretty soon after I went public, I started to get uh, emails from people saying, oh, be careful, be careful, be careful. And I, at this stage, I think I might actually stop here because I want to just read you or reread you uh, the Oracle Girl reading. I read this out on the People Speak Out and I shared it on Rachel Speaks Out, but when I got this through, I printed it and brought it with me actually. Hands freezing cold. Let's just stop here and get it out. So I'm just going to read you. I'm going to read this to you. I'm going to leave the camera there to make it easy for myself. <laughs> like all this paraphernalia and the dog lead and everything. So this is what Oracle Girl, she posted this and I read it and I thought, bloody hell, that really resonates. Hold on, let's just move those out of the way of the camera. I thought, this absolutely resonates. And uh, when something really resonates, I share it. Here we go. The truth always wins. Not your truth or my truth, nature. It doesn't matter how evil or criminal it gets. In the end, there is no more pathway. It just takes longer when so few will tread any other path themselves. But that doesn't really matter. It takes a handful per million to align with nature's principles. And when the time is right, the results are cataclysmic. A small number globally is emerging who simply will not compromise. They can't do anything else. Their frequency is the game changer. It doesn't lie in the hands of those in power. Can you see what I'm saying? It is simply too late for those who lie, kill and destroy. Also those who support them. The reawakening of a few key groups the world over is currently firing a revolution. Nature comes first and so does love. 
Finally, only truth and peace can follow. So I, I read that and I thought, bloody hell. Wow, that is so good. That is so on point. Hold on, where's it gone? Run off. It's bored with me reading. So then I get, let's keep walking now actually because I'm going to get cold if I don't keep walking. Oh my God. There he is. Hey, Kobe, come on. Let's go back. To, let's go to Ravensdale. Let's go to Ravensdale. Then, next thing I know, I get an email. Well, I don't often read all my emails. I just ha this one happened to catch my eye. Now, I, c I do receive this kind of communication quite frequently when I do, when I do catch up on them. And they're almost always from someone kind of anonymous like at hotmail.com or at protonmail.com or at as this one is at btinternet.com subject re oracle girl dodgy hi rachel re oracle girl i i just saw that you're advertising oracle girl on your telegram well just to correct that i do not do any ads on my telegram i simply share things which i think are cool or funny or on point i certainly don't don't do advertising i certainly don't do any kind of paid promotion i, I don't monetize any of my channels very deliberately so because i want to be impartial and i don't want anyone to say oh you're just doing that for the money so she goes on to say just a bit of info you may or may not agree Obviously, this is just my informal opinion, opinion, so I may be totally wrong on this. One, I think she may be a deep state CGI, computer generated image, i.e. not a real human in many of her images online. Two, you never see her with other people in the same picture frame, nor in a YouTube video frame. It's like she's got no friends or is not a real human, hence cannot be put in a picture video with other people. Number three, she's got weird shaped head going on, e.g. September 5th photo from her Telegram page. Hence, I think she's CGI. The pictures of her are fake in my opinion, like a bad cutout if you zoom in on it, plonked onto a scenery landscape picture. Four, she's on Companies House website, Oracle Girl Media Limited, Incorporated January 2020, and is making loads of money from giving people purifications. She's just topped trading, according to the latest full accounts, and 334,000 has gone from her profit and loss account suddenly. 350,000 from Cash and Bank has disappeared. Five, Oracle Girl Donations Limited, her second company, blah, blah, blah. Five, she's very hypnotic on her videos. Her messages always get purified and pay her money for it. She's been running that same scam since she started. Point six, she talks rubbish on her videos. Have a look and try and follow anything she's saying. It's nonsense. Seven, blah, 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 blah. Seven, she allegedly gives to charity a lot, according to her website, but I couldn't find any real ones that were bona fide. Bona fide, I think she means. Blah, 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 blah. Eight, here's a guy called Tony Sayers doing a review on her, saying saying she's uh, um, a review on her being a spiritual guru, blah, blah, blah. I won't go on because it just got, it's a tirade of abuse. And it's basically, it's the same pattern. It's the same pattern that I notice when people write to me. Oh, so-and-so, they plant, they plant seeds of doubt. They plant seeds of doubt. And they also, there's usually some kind of financial aspersion piece that has dropped in as well because basically what they're trying to do these people now this may be real people or it may be controlled opposition who knows but always the pattern seems to be the same cast dispersions uh, drop in a few financial shenanigans and try to plant seeds of doubt um, with people who well there it goes um, try and plant seeds of doubt uh, regarding anyone who is speaking truth or speaking out. So, of course, I just wrote back to this uh, person. I shouldn't, but probably I should have just ignored it. And I said, uh, um, well, actually, the post came from Ravi, who met Oracle Girl at an event and, and sent me that chair and said she's an am amazing, awakened soul who's really speaking truth on behalf of the freedom movement. And... Uh, She's a really great being. And uh, if you know Ravi, Ravi is the guy who does the cacao ceremonies, who's a pretty amazing shaman, very good. He can see through everything. He's a pretty good judge of character. And so 
if he has met someone and he says they're bona fide, they're kosher, then that, I take that as a very strong yes. And I'd also um, really rated a lot of what Oracle Girl had said. So, so this is the interesting thing. So when I received these emails, basically doing the same thing about the Freedom Alliance, trying to stab the knife in and cast financial allegations, I thought this is the same pattern. It's the same pattern I see over and over again. It doesn't matter who it is. It seems to be the same pattern. And so I always, with these things, take a common law approach. Okay, that sounds like a serious allegation. Send me your evidence. You know, if you believe that this person has caused harm, injury or loss, or is of some kind of fraud, send me your evidence. Because in my world, in the common law view of things, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. So, so that's the stance I take. Send me your evidence. And I'm also very much into transparency. So I forwarded all of this onto Freedom Alliance so that, you know, because if people are casting aspersions about you, it's really not fair. If people are defaming you, it's really not fair for that to be done behind closed doors. Let's have transparency, share it. Okay, if you believe that about someone, speak it publicly. Don't do it in private, like in whispers. So I'm all for truth, I'm all for freedom, I'm all for transparency, I'm all for common law rights, and I'm all for justice. For all of those things. And I'm a stand for all of those things. And I'm at that point now where I will speak out, and actually I won't sacrifice my authenticity for attachment, as Gabor Mate speaks about. So many of us don't speak out because we don't want to piss people off, or oh, we don't want to rock the boat. It's happened in the Buxton movement. I mean, how many people there stood up and spoke out about what was going on, about the injustice of how Dean was treated and excluded from the very group that he created? Oh no, we don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to lose any friends. Let me just, uh, I'll just keep quiet about it and just go and uh, have my drinks and enjoy my speakers and enjoy my tapas. I won't be a stand for truth or freedom. And hey, guys, if we're not a stand for truth and freedom in all its forms, then what the hell are we doing? You know, may as well just go along with the whole program and just comply, right? You know, anyway, I'm going off on a rant. Let me get back to the point. So in my world, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. So the interesting thing then happened is I, I started to get more intel from a different source. Um, and this was to do with two people who, had sp who were within the party and had spoken out, who, um, who then basically got basically booted out or forced to leave, essentially. Hold on a second, pheasant. So, uh, so I had another whole batch of intel coming in from this direction. And another piece of the jigsaw was that the, the party wanted to rewrite its constitution. So I volunteered to be part of the, the constitution review team, which had me looking at their constitution, sort of rather hoping it would be like a we the people constitution rather than a sort of what read like a sort of corporate policies and procedures manual, to be quite honest. But it was interesting to read it because um, I was able to kind of say, hold on a minute, this vote of no confidence, according to the constitution, in these two leaving people shouldn't have been decided by the executive team. It should have been decided by the entire membership of the party, according to the constitution. Was that done? And the response came back, well, no, not really, because to be quite honest, if the exec team doesn't have confidence in you, what's the point of putting it to a vote of the main party? That was the kind of, that was the kind of response I got. And it's like, just get on with reviewing the constitution and, and get on with writing a new one. And I'm like, well, 
I'm thinking to myself, what's the point of writing a new constitution if we're not sticking to the old one? Anyway, so I'm, I'm questioning these things and I'm saying, hold on, something doesn't stack up here. Next thing we know, suddenly there's this sudden public announcement of the resignation of seven members of the executive team. Not just one or two, seven. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, that's a bit odd. Seven people suddenly resigning, only leaving two executive team members left. Next thing we know, the whole of the telegram groups, have, firstly, they were put on slow mode so that we couldn't communicate around what was unfolding and then they were deleted completely. All of the groups were, were deleted. Or the majority, one, one was left a video group. But all of them were, were closed down. So basically it left no means to uh, communicate with anyone. And, you know, I mean, I, I'd only, I only knew a few of the members of, of, the, of the party. I mean, I completely, I knew no one when I came into it. I had no previous connections to anyone. So, anyway, so then two new groups were set up. This was the interesting thing. So two people took it upon themselves to set up telegram groups. And I was added into one of these groups. I didn't know about the second group. And um, so I obliged that group by adding people, everyone that I, I happened to remember was in the group that I happened to have in my contacts. So there were a few people who I just added to the group. And then meanwhile, there's another group that had been opened um, by someone else not on the executive. The one that I was in was by the two remaining executives, on people on the executive team. So suddenly we got this split. And it's like, why are there suddenly two groups? Oh my goodness gracious. And then, and then uh, see, I'm starting to think in the minds of a politician. Well, maybe that was done to see who was allied to who. Because, of course, if I suddenly add someone to a group, maybe I'm the controlled opposition and these are my allies with, that are infiltrating the group. Maybe it was done that way. Who knows? Then, next thing we know... Oh, my nose is running. Then, next thing we know is that a public statement has gone out saying that because there's no longer a quorum under the constitution, and a quorum means three executive members, the executive cannot have a meeting. And the executive cannot then, under the terms of the constitution, appoint a temporary um, officer to fill the spaces left. And so there's going to be elections for the new executive, but they're going to have to be held by the outgoing resigning um, executives. Now, that's fishy. <laughs> that is absolutely fishy to me. Hold on, I hear voices. Where are they coming from? I'm at Ravensdale now. There's the Ravens Glyph. So we have a situation where we've got seven executive members who en masse have resigned and yet are still controlling the party. It's just like you couldn't make it up, folks. Oh my goodness. So the bottom line is that if we don't take over the party by the, I think it's 23rd of December, the party lapses. And uh, basically, according to the constitution, all the monies just get given to charity, get given to a charity of the executive's choice. And of course, all the monies are still controlled by the outgoing executive. Just add that little detail in. So it's all a little bit of a entangled ball. Uh, it's like a bit of a Gordian knot of complexity and nonsensicalness. And of course, the, if you, I mean, I, I've, this has all inspired me to look at the, um, 
electoral commission rules and regulations, which I have to say are very tight. tight. I mean, there's a lot of red tape around setting up a political party and the rules and regulations. And, and, and I think rightly so, because I think it's completely open to manipulation. Um, so we have a situation now where we don't have a quorum of executive because there's only two executives, not three, as per the constitution. We have to comply to the constitution until a new constitution is written, but we can't put that through until, until members have voted on it. And because the whole of the membership databases are held by the outgoing executive and the website and all of the tools and everything that belongs to the party is held by the outgoing executive, that all those remain are completely, <laughs> the hands are tied. So, so actually, in, in my humble observation, the only route out of this is the power of the people, the power of the members. Now, I'm assuming, having seen the accounts, there must be at least a thousand, if not two thousand, members of the Freedom Alliance, people who signed up and uh, put in a membership subscription. You have to be a member for four months to vote and or, or to nominate or to stand. Um, so all of those people, all of you who may be members of the Freedom Alliance, the power is with you. The power is with you to take control of this situation and nominate and vote in people, representatives, and a minimum of three offices. So there's a leader, a secretary or treasurer, and a nominating officer. So there's three roles. They can be held by two people, but basically three roles. And a minimum of two officers that need to be voted in. Um, and I think it needs to be at least three people. Well, there's two execs, so but there's three three positions. So I would really urge you, if you are a member of the Freedom Alliance, that you use this opportunity to nominate someone to stand in one of those three roles or three, three different people to, to stand in those roles. Now, just for clarity, that is not, nothing to do with me. I'm a newbie. I'm not, I haven't been in it for more than four months. This isn't me saying, oh, vote for me. I want to be leader. Not at all. I'm interested in people power. I'm interested in truth. I'm interested in freedom. Because to my mind, it doesn't matter what forces of darkness, controlled opposition, who has infiltrated that party. And I would imagine that any person speaking out, any party, any group which gets powerful is going to be infiltrated. It's going to happen because the system does not want people speaking out. So it doesn't matter what, what group you're in, what network, what, in what, what organization, no matter what you do, no matter how, how tight you make your, your entry requirements or whatever, you are going to experience this at some point. You're going to be infiltrated. It's just, a, it's just the way things are. That's my observation. So the people have the power in this situation. So I would urge you, is members, whoever the members are, I don't know who the members are, I don't have access to that database, but I'm speaking to you. If you're a member of the Freedom Alliance, to use the power that you have, if you've been a member for four months or more, firstly to nominate someone who is a real, who, re who you really believe is a trustworthy upholder of the freedom movement and free, free speech, who is non-corruptible, nominate th those people. And those nom that nomination has to be seconded by at least, I think it's at least 10 members, one of which has to be from Scotland, one has to be from England and one from Wales. But they have to be nominated by 10 people, I believe, or seconded. So... Use the power that you have to nominate someone who holds, who will, in your belief, uphold the principles of freedom, freedom and truth. And then when it comes to the elections, which will then happen next week, based on who's nominated this week, use the power of your vote to vote in 
executive officers into the party who will uphold the principles of truth and freedom of speech and who are principled <laughs> good eggs, basically. That's my suggestion of the way out of this because the reason why I suspect the party has been infiltrated is because it has the potential to create so much damage within the system. You know, it's one thing doing stand in the parks or doing little freedom hubs. It's quite another to mobilize the entire freedom movement and create a political force which can infiltrate and pattern interrupt the shit show which is unfolding. And it's, this isn't just the parliamentary elections because there's lots of by-elections coming up. There's one tomorrow in uh, Stratford and Urmston, which is a, a, um, a borough of Manchester. <laughs> I've been enlightened this morning. Um... Christina Glancy. So if you live in that Manchester constituency, please do get to the polling station tomorrow and cast your vote for Christina Glancy. Um, standing for the Freedom Alliance. And the, uh, the real opportunity as well is next May is the council elections. Because of course we're seeing what's happening in Oxford and, and Canterbury. These local councils are the next thing. They, they're being used to bulldoze through, essentially, these climate change lockdown plans for you could only travel within 15 minutes of your home. It's going to come to every council. We have to get people in to these councils to speak out and pattern interrupt because if it's left down to the World Economic Forum parties of Labour and Conservative, this is going to be bulldozed through in every in every town, in every city. This is just the beginning, folks. So this is a really critical moment in time. We can't give up. We can't lose faith. We can't uh, just say, oh, fuck it, it's not worth it. And I certainly am not going to flight. I'm not going to resign. I'm going to stay and I'm going to be that pattern interrupter who will be the stand for truth and freedom within that political party. And I'm not going to resign. I'm not going to leave this situation. I'm not going to leave the shit show and say, oh, fucking hell, this is a bit of a nightmare. No, I'm going to stay because I am a stand for truth and freedom. I'm one of the people that Oracle Girl is talking about in her, in her post that I read out earlier. I can't do anything else. I'm so committed now to this cause and uh, it's funny because Sass was saying on the call on Monday she came on and she's like all this all this that's happening you know all the bucks and shenanigans and the freedom alliance shenanigans you know what's going on Rachel this is what's happening with you that is causing this and I, I'm, I gave that a lot of thought and I thought well, you know the answer is really really simple and that is and I remember watching an interview with Deva Pramal and Mitten saying this about the power of mantra. And they said in this interview, this is several years ago, they said, um, chant mantras for a month and watch what happens in your life. And that's exactly what I've been doing. I joined Lucidia and Raphael's morning mantras. And so every morning for at least the past month, if not six weeks, I've been getting on there at 9 a.m. till 9.40 and six days a week. I've missed a couple, but I've been on there pretty much every morning, every morning chanting mantras. And, you know, it's chanting mantras is a bit like sieving flour. If you've ever sieved flowers and people coming, if you've ever sieved flour, it's kind of you sieve, 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 and you end up with a very fine powder, flour powder, and then in the sieve you are left with lots of um, uh, bits of grit or lumps or the bits that you don't want. Well, singing mantras, it seems to me, is sieving in reverse, in the sense of it's like sieving to a higher, sieving vertically, upwards. And so you're raising your vibration, and then anything that does not match that has to fall away. And so I truly believe... Hold on, let's just get past these people. Coming down on their walks... Hold on a second. Hiya. Hi. Hi. So, uh, because
because I've been chanting these mantras, and and because because you do them in the morning, so it's like um, let me let me think of one uh, that we did on yesterday on my birthday, it was on Monday. I'll oh, hold on, this car coming. Let's get out of the way. We were singing. Oh my goodness! Come on, Kobe. This is what happens when Kobe doesn't want to come. He just sort of locks down. He goes, he puts his brakes on, and like you don't want to go. Do you want to go back to the car? Come on, let's go back to the car. Come on. Let's see how our trees are doing. We fell two trees up here. Anyway, as I was saying, so whatever mantras you sing in the morning, they sort of they hang around in your mind like a little, like a little um, a mind worm. Like a, what's the word for it? When you have a tune going round in your, in your mind. Kobe, come on, this way. We're going this way now. Come on, this way. An earworm, that's it. It's an earworm, isn't it? So you, you end up the whole day having this little earworm of this mantra going round and round in your mind. And it's just really raises your vibration. And so it's like you do become um, in that energy, in that higher vibration, in that higher 5D energy. So wherever you go, it's like you're, it's just like turning the floodlights on. So going into any situation or group or political party, it's just the equivalent. <laughs> the equivalent. And this isn't spiritual snobbery. This is, this is just the truth of it. It's like coming in and being an absolute floodlight and like a Tibetan bell speaking truth and not compromising and not, and not compromising in the interests of people liking you or, you know, trying to fit in. It's kind of like, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to speak my truth because that's who I am. I can't do anything other than that. I've got to be a stand for truth and freedom before everything else, before any allegiances to individuals or parties or friends. This is so important to me now. And that's, there's not many of us, there's not many of us who will make that stand because life's too comfortable. It doesn't feel safe necessarily to speak out. I honestly and truly believe that there's no alternative now. We have to keep that resonance high. We have to keep speaking our truth. We have to be a stand for what we believe in. And it doesn't matter what the consequences are. We have to. It's that, that crucial. Because this program is being bulldozed through. And, uh, you know, we have to be that light which is shining in the darkness and flooding the labyrinth with light. That is what is going to collapse this. And that's why they're trying to close down people like Oracle Girl. That's why they're trying to close down people like me. I've got so many scammers on Telegram now. I get messages every day from people saying, is this you? Is this you trying to sell me cryptocurrency? Is this you sending me private messages? I mean, this isn't random, folks. This is an organized campaign to, in an attempt to, to plant seeds of doubt and to infiltrate and corrupt and collapse the freedom movement. I'm absolutely convinced of it. And it's coming from all sorts of angles, all sorts of unexpected angles. So we need to be ultra aware of what's going on and we need to stick to our guns and be very, very wary because you know, sticking to truth and sticking to that high vibration the Wetiko has to show its face. It has to show its face. There's nowhere for it to hide in that higher resonance of truth and, and light. So, and unity consciousness. It can't, it can't operate under those conditions. It has to show its face. And uh, it doesn't take long for that to show. So keep speaking your truth. Keep being a stand for freedom. And if you're part of the Freedom Alliance don't give up hope because there's a lot of very good people in that alliance. A lot of the very dedicated, amazing people. Don't let a small number of people spoil the party. Have a great day and good luck to Christina Glancy.
in the by-election in Manchester tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye for now.